Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about transitioning from one stack to the other. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted in a video that I made that is called How do IT companies look at personal development for their developers? And the basics of what I'm saying there is that for the most part there are opportunities uh, but it's always a range. Some companies don't want you to do anything besides code and some companies give you a lot of the opportunities to learn but it's usually on you and in many cases it's up to you to sort of work with, find in my opinion at the very least the best way to get better at the new stack is to work within that role. And so the question was, but how do I find a job in my preferred tech stack if I don't, if I never worked in the in the specific tech stack? I need at least some vague understanding of this thing before someone will hire me. And I think spending small amounts, I think spending a small amount of hours every month will accomplish that. But I'm just a twenty-five dollar an hour developer in some second world country. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, uh, no, I, I'm not sure how your salary and uh, you sort of seem to downplaying your own. I, I don't know what you're doing there, dude. But the, the fact that you are paid twenty-five dollars an hour in a second world country doesn't really have so much to do with how how companies think about you in uh, terms of like skills and tech stacks and things like that. So the thing that companies care about is results. That's it. Bottom line. Nothing else matters. Everything else that you've heard is bullshit. And the reason why it's bullshit is not because it may not be relevant, but it is because that is at the end of the day what matters. Output. And the prejudices against where you worked before, uh, your background if you have a computer science degree, like all of this other stuff that you hear about, has certain levels of relevancies depending on where you are and who you're talking to. Because guys, in case you didn't know that, humans are humans. And companies are made up of humans. It's people who have different opinions and different prejudices, etc., etc. And that's why we still have sexism, racism, political differences, like all of this stuff. And it comes down to that simple thing that, sure, if you have a computer science degree, you might be interpreted in one way, but in an, if you are self taught, that doesn't necessarily mean that every company is going to look for someone else. Because it comes down to the value system. The only thing that is a hard requirement is always. Can you do the job? Nothing else. So if you think, for example, that because the, I mean, from my perspective, it sounds a little bit naive to ha already, yeah, a few hours every month uh, is usually, it might be enough. That's the thing, right? It's hard for me to tell because I don't know how skilled you are or what the requirements are for the positions that you apply for. But usually it takes a little bit more effort than that. And I try to tell people that I think that the most healthy mindset around learning something is not to think in terms of hours spent. Because I find uh, this is not always true. It's just something that I've found based on what I've seen in very many, like a lot of candidates interviewing a lot of people, worked with a lot of software developers now. And that is that when a person says to me that I'm going to spend, like when their perspective is on how much input they will give into something, like learning a new tech stack, for example, I think spending a small amount of hours every month, etc., etc., it's not always true, but I found that often that is the perspective of somebody who is learning tech and so forth and so forth, not because they're interested in tech per se, but because there are some other benefits that they will gain from it. It's sort of like some people are genuinely interested in doing sports because they think it's fun with sports and some do it to get a nice body so they will get laid. Does that make it a just I hope that that makes sense to you. Because the people that usually have a real interest in a specific stack, they never think in terms of how many hours will I spend. They just go, I'm going to learn this thing because I think it's pretty awesome. Because that is, as I said, that's the end of the day what matters. Can you work with this thing? When you go into that interview, you're going to get a test, usually, that's going to test your coding skills, and you're going to get a personal interview where they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. 
And if you can answer all of that and do all the things and then go in and do the job, nobody gives a shit how you got there. They don't care if you spend one hour because you're a super genius on this thing or like you have a lot of experience. Or if they sp if you spent years and years and years preparing and like studied and so forth. Results are everything. And so the real uh, perspective I think that you should have on this is that if you have never worked in a specific stack, getting a job in a stack that is slightly different is actually not that difficult if you have prior experience and as I like to say, if you have the core skills. Because pro guys, programming in, let's just talk, talk about different programming languages. Programming in one language in and in another there are differences, there's going to be a little bit of an onboarding thing going on there, but for most companies that's going to be good enough, because it's not like you're doing two vastly different things. It's not like one is, I don't know, medicine and one is astronomy. It's not so different that you can't possibly be able to do one after doing the other, right? And it's the, it's the same thing with like specific tools, like in Fronten, for example. If you know how to work in React, it's very likely that you will be able to learn how to work in Angular or Vue or vice versa or so forth and so forth. But it really comes down to do you have the core skills? And so that's why I tell you that it's really not that difficult to switch stacks. It really comes down to a bit of personal investment in your spare time and learning enough so that you can actually be productive in the tool that you want to transition into because that is what the companies care about and it's, uh, the the main reason why juniors are finding it difficult is not necessarily because they don't know exactly the stack that we're talking about it is because they don't have prior experience they haven't proven that they can handle a uh, programmer's job because as with my own coworkers and so forth they sort of realize that very quickly what you have to know in order to do the job as a software developer can differ a lot from team to team. In some cases, a front-end developer might find themselves having to do a lot of fairly advanced op stuff or backends that they have to learn it on the job because there is no, otherwise we won't be able to ship things or make money or like things like that. And sometimes backend developers have to learn enough JavaScript to produce an interface of some sort. It's so real, that's where, that's why I tell people that the only real truth to software development in terms of what stack you can focus on is that it might range from that you only focus on one minor, minor, minor thing in the thing that you specialize in all the way up to that you have to be a full stack developer. It really comes down to a complicated composition of what the company needs and what they're willing to sort of, and what, of course what you are willing to learn or you can learn and be productive doing etc etc. And that's why I always tell people if you want to be 100% sure that you can deal with all of this and transition seamlessly between things. Become a full stock developer. I promise you, the idea that you're going to be shit at both front end and back end is complete bullshit. Uh, it's made up by people who have, I mean, my, have an inferiority complex. So, what I want you to take away from this is that. Uh, it's actually not that difficult to go and get a job in a stack that you haven't been using before uh, or worked with before if you already have prior work experience. You just have to go and learn the tool so that you can be productive with the thing. You don't have to be a master and then you just do, uh, apply and be very transparent that yeah I, I will I'm actually want I want to go and learn th this sort of stuff and work more with this sort of stack in many cases companies will see that as a benefit because you are now showing hunger interest etc etc and you have this prior experience that you have from some other stack or so forth and so forth and then there you go into most likely just check do you have enough skill uh, or do you know this tool well enough to come and do the job that we are asking you to do and many ca in many cases, uh, that's going to be just fine. There are uh, exap absolute exceptions when they're looking for a specialist, but often this is going to be something that works out for you if you just put in some effort to learn the tool. Uh, and if you can do that in a few hours every month or whatever, like what you think you're going to invest, just try it. Try and see how, how your learning strategy works out and take it from there. It's really not that difficult, I promise you. Have a great day.